What's up YouTube? Welcome back to another edition of Coding with Robbie. I'm your host Robbie and in this video we're going to be checking out the Shopify recommended product API. So this is an official API from Shopify and basically how it works is you hit this endpoint right here, you give it a product ID and it's going to send back a bunch of related product data. So um, how this endpoint works is if your store has a bunch of order data, I think the threshold is a thousand, it's going to use that data to figure out what to recommend. And if you don't meet that threshold, it's basically going to recommend products in the same collection. So this is great for building sections like this. You may also like or related products. You could also use it for maybe an upsell section. And uh, yeah, there's a few different use cases. In this video, we're going to be building a section just like this. So um, yeah, let's get right into it. So I got my store pulled up here. And uh, one thing you're going to have to do before we get started is you're probably on a dev store, which isn't going to have a thousand orders minus zero. So you're going to want to go ahead and create some collections. So go to products, uh, collections, and just create some uh, collections with all your products. So that'll make it so the API actually returns something. Because if you don't have these, it's just going to return an empty array. And uh, yeah, you should be good to go after that. Um, so let's do it. Let's go to our um, theme. I have mine pulled up right here. Let's go to sections. Let's create a new section called related products liquid. And then when you create a section in Shopify, you got to have a schema. Let's go schema and end schema. And then a schema is just some JSON. So let's do some brackets and we'll give our section a name. Let's call ours related products. And then we got to give it settings. So ours will just be an empty array for now. And then you got to give it presets with at least one preset. So let's do an array and we'll have one preset, which just has name related products. That should be good. And then let's go up here and do our HTML. Let's go div class is equal to related. And then, uh, I have a class called width in my style sheet. This just contains the width, uh, so it's not full width. Oops. And then let's do an H2 tag. And inside here, we'll just put related products. And then let's have a div. And this will be related products. And this is what's actually going to contain our uh, product objects. So just like that, let, that looks good to start. Let's add this section to our theme. So let's go to Shopify, online store themes. Let's go to customize. And then let's go add section and find the uh, section we just added and add it. And I already have it from when I did this before. So you should just have it once and then hit save. And then go to your store and you can refresh and you'll see it at the bottom. So it's rendering our section. So let's uh, start with the API request to get our products. So let's go a script tag right here. And then if we go back to the documentation, they give us an example. So I'll post this link in the description if you can't find it. But if you go on here, they give us an example right here. So let's copy this and we'll paste it in here. And let's take a look at what's going on. So we got window.shopify.routes.root. This is just the base path of your website. And it's going to include uh, the locale. If you check out up here, you have to add the locale if there is one. So that'll be included in that um, variable right here. And then they got recommendations slash products.json. And then you got to give it a product ID. So they're just hard coding an ID right now. So we're going to have to change that. And then this limit is optional. So let's delete it. And intent is uh, op also optional, so let's delete that. And uh, yeah, let's get a product ID. So how we're gonna be doing it is um, if our cart has items in it, we'll grab the first product ID of the first item. And if there's no uh, cart items, we'll just hard code a product ID in. So let's go up here and let's go if uh, cart.itemCount is greater than zero, else and end if. So if we do have items in cart, let's create a new variable. So let's go assign 
and we'll call the variable related ID and it's going to be equal to cart items. We'll get the first item in the array and then we'll get the product ID property. And then uh, if there isn't any items in cart, we'll create the same variable and we're just going to hard code an ID right there. So let's get an ID. Let's go to our store. I'm just going to add this guy right here. And then I'm going to go to slash cart.js and uh, let's look for it in here. So can command F, let's go product ID. And we got one right here, so let's copy that. So if we don't have a cart item, we'll just hard code in that ID. And now we're gonna use that within the URL. So let's go right here and replace the hard coded value with our variable, which is related ID. Save that, and then uh, it's gonna fetch all the products, and then let's just console.log it. So console.log and uh, products, which is right here. And let's see if that works. So let's go back to our store. Uh, let's go back to the home page. I'll open up console. And let's see, we get them right here. Here's the array of related products. Now we can use this data to dynamically build a related product block. So let's do that. Let's create a new function in here. We'll just call it build block. And it's gonna accept one of those product object objects. So let's go product. And then let's go const HTML is equal to backticks. And then we'll build it right in here. So let's go a um, class is equal to related product. And then we gotta give it an href. So let's get that from the uh, product object. So let's uh, get it. It's gonna be product.url. And then we gotta get the image. So let's go in here. And it's going to be product dot, let's check it out. Let's go back here. The product dot images, or what's media? No, I don't like media. Let's go product dot images zero. The images zero. And then let's get the title of the product. We'll put it in an H3 tag. So that's just gonna be product dot title. And then um, <clears throat> let's get a, uh, what do we need? What do we need? Probably the price. Let's go span and we'll go product.price. And this is just going to be in cents for right now. We're going to fix that later. But here we go. We built the HTML of the block. So let's return that. Let's go return HTML. And then we're going to build a block for each one of these products. And then we'll append it to our uh, related products div right here. So let's loop through the products. Let's go products.foreach. And that's going to receive the individual product. Whoops. And then let's go const HTML is equal to, and we'll use that function right here. So build block. We're going to pass this the individual product and then we're going to append this HTML to our div up here. So let's grab that class name and then we'll go document query selector. We'll put in that class <clears throat> and then let's go enter HTML and then we're going to add our HTML right here. So let's go plus equal to HTML. I think that should uh, append all the blocks. So let's try that out. So uh, let me just close this. Let's refresh. And uh, we'll get an error. Let's see what I did wrong. It says document.queer selector is not a function. So let's add the Y. Let's go, where is it? Right here. I forgot the Y in query. Save that. Go back. Wait a second. Refresh. And uh, there we go, it updated. And now we get all our related product objects right here. So by default, it's gonna return 10 products. So we probably don't want 10. Let's actually use that limit uh, parameter. So let's go and limit is equal to, and we'll just do three on our section. So let's go three, go back and see what happens. Refresh, refresh. And now we get one, two, three. So now let's style this up a little better. Let's go to our style sheet. 
and I'll create a new section down here. Uh, related products. So let's get the root div. Let's just add some padding on the top and bottom. So padding 60 pixels zero. And then let's get the div containing the different blocks. So that's a uh, related products. And we'll make this display grid. And then we'll have three columns equally spaced. So let's go grid template columns. And it's going to repeat. We want three columns of equal space. So one FR. And then let's put a gap in between them of 40 pixels. And then uh, let's style the related product. For, so each individual block, let's get the image. We'll go border radius, 16 pixels. Margin bottom, 20 pixels. Uh, let's get the H3 tag within there. And let's just go font size, 24 pixels, color number 111. Let's get the span, which is the price. And we'll go color is uh, number 5e, 5e, 5e. And we'll go font size 18 pixels. Let's actually add a little margin below the title too. Let's go margin bottom. Let's try five pixels. And uh, let's see how that looks. So let's go back, I'll refresh. And there we go, related product. So let's add uh, some space below this heading and make it bigger. So that's going to be related H2. Let's go font size 40, margin bottom 20. Let's see how that looks. Go back, I'll refresh, I'll refresh, and there we go. And can I click these blocks? I can, and it takes me to the product. So now let's fix this. Um, this price right here. So you don't want to just hard code in the format, you want to use their actual money format. So uh, you can get that, I believe by just going shop dot money format. Let's see what that gets us. Refresh, refresh. Yeah, so that's this stores money format. And then there's a function uh, on GitHub that will automatically use that format and format it for us. So let's try to find that. Let's go uh, JavaScript, Shopify, format money. And uh, I always use this guy right here. So someone extracted the method from uh, option selection, which is kind of an old JavaScript that Shopify used to use. But this function works pretty good. So let's copy it. And uh, let's just throw it in here. Let's go above this function. And then let's clean this up a little bit. Let's go function format money is going to accept sense in the format. And then yeah, it's going to format it and return the value. So let's just minimize that. And uh, let's use it. So let's copy this up here. And then let's go inside our build block and let's go const formatted price is equal to, and then we'll run this function right here. So format money. And I'll put that uh, URL in the description, by the way, if you can't find it. So format money, first argument, and a phone call. First argument is the sense. So that was product.price. Second argument is the format. So ours was a uh, shop.money format. So this should get us the formatted price. Let's replace it right here. And let's see if that fixes it. So we'll go back. And there we go, we got the formatted prices. So that's pretty much it. Uh, maybe you wanna have a quick add button right here. I can show you how to do that. So to do that, we could just add a form to this block right here. So let's go form, method is gonna be post. Uh, action is gonna be slash cart slash add. And then within that form, we just need an input with the ID. So let's go input name is equal to ID. Uh, type will make it hidden so you don't see it. And then let's go value is equal to. And we got to add the value of the variant ID that we want to add. Or the value is going to be the variant ID that we want to add. So let's just add the first variant. So let's go product uh, zero dot ID 
And then let's add a, add the cart button. So let's go button type is equal to submit. And we'll go add to cart. And uh, that should be a working add to cart button. So let's try that out. Let's go back here. I'll refresh. And I add the zipped jacket and we get string ID. So we're missing that ID. I did something wrong. Let's see. I forgot to wrap this in uh, the JavaScript thingamajigger right there. That should fix it. Let's see. Updated. Let's try it again. Whoops. Cancel. Let's go back. Refresh. Let's add the zipped jacket. Oh, I didn't click the button. Let's add the zipped jacket. And there we go. It adds it. So it is working. And uh, you could style that up real quick. So we could go in here. Let's go dot related product button. And I have the styles copied just to save a little bit of time, but you could copy these if you wanted. Let's go back. All right. So one last thing we want to do is we probably want to hook this up to a setting right here. So let's just go down here. Let's go to settings and we'll add a new one. And it'll be type of text. And then we'll go label will be heading. The ID will be heading. And then uh, we'll give it a default value of you may also like save that. And now let's connect it up top. So let's go up here. And instead of hard coding that, we're going to go uh, section dot settings. And then it's whatever the ID is. Ours is heading all lowercase. And that should hook up uh, that setting. So let's see if that worked. So it should change to uh, you may also like. We'll refresh. You may also like. So there we go. There's our related product section. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, make sure to like, subscribe, leave a comment. Let me know you're there and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Hey, thanks for watching everybody. If you enjoyed this video, you can click the icon in the middle of the screen to subscribe. And there's a couple videos on the right for you to check out. Till next time. Bye.